Welcome to Calvary Christian Church, Pretoria East, a church you can call home. Thank you for joining us today. We know you shall have a blessed time with us. Get ready to experience the word, prayer, and worship. We are a word-based church that stands on the solid foundation of Christ. Our vision is the Big E, where we exalt Christ, evangelize the lost, encourage the hurting, equip the saints, and enrich the community. Our mission is transforming the total man by restoring hope to the hopeless, training leaders, and equipping saints to the building of the church where Christ is Lord. Enjoy the service with us, and remember to invite a friend. Legend of Judah, M. Gospel, Chiri Z, Independent National, Seven the Ones, Ingoma, Matiko Mufuchera, SMS, Zitura Randa Milipe, Kama SMS, Ingoma, Best Gospel Single, Chiri Z, M. Gospel, 240439, Itomomba, Legend of Judah, Ingoma. Wea Kunda Sata.
We need you more and more in this season to fill us up. Silambe. you more and more in this time, oh God, to fill us up. our service this wonderful morning at Cover Christian Church Pretoria East and this morning we want to welcome you for making the time to be with us we are so excited that you made it a point to you know venture into this particular space today and we believe that your coming will not be in vain we believe that God will richly bless you this wonderful morning before we get into too many things I want us to really just join hands together and commit ourselves to prayer this wonderful morning. This week we received, um, you know, disturbing reports on the news that there is almost one million graves that are being prepared uh, in our province alone of Gauteng. And when I received that, my system was shocked like everyone else. I thought, yo, is that, is that the anticipation? Is that the direction that uh, people are thinking we're going to go to or whoever is preparing those graves, which is in essence the government and the health department, is that what they believe that uh, this is where we're going to? But in my spirit, I felt that it takes us to rise up and pray against this and stand against this. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face and pray, I will heal their land. And we want to pray this wonderful morning. I want you to join together with us in corporate prayer as we commit this country unto the hands of God. We want to publicly and directly denounce any form of mass death that seems to be anticipated upon our nation. As I wake up in the morning, I pray over my family. I pray over my, my siblings, my own immediate family, my own nucleus as well. And I pray even for every single person that I might know that may God watch over them. I'll give you a testimony as well that we have seen even in our, in our own circle, in our own church, we've seen people recover from COVID, people get healed by God himself. And we believe that the same thing Thing that God did in those people's lives he can do in anybody else's lives in anybody else's life and let's just believe together and pray together this morning and I want us to take this few minutes of our time and commit this land unto the hands of God that may God be the one that takes charge we need him more than ever even in this hour we need his intervention we need his grace and we need his power moving in our lives. Let's begin to pray. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, we come before your presence. We pray for our land, oh Father. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 29, you said, pray for the peace of the land because in it is your peace. And Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus as we commit the country of South Africa unto your hands. We come, oh God, for the trusting that, Lord, we serve serve a God that heals. We serve a God that delivers. We serve a God that cares even for our well-being. And Father, we join corporately in prayer this morning. We stand and we denounce, oh God, the, the mess death that has been, oh God, Father, projected. Projections are not in accordance to your will. Projections are not in accordance to your power. And Father, we pray that Lord God Almighty, anybody that is under the sound of my voice, 
and beyond mighty God that is oh God for the feeling like this disease has come to kill them this disease has come to take their life we stand against the spirit of death right now we decree and declare that the hand of God will be the one to deliver us we pray for the divine manifestation of your power we pray for the divine oh God for the orchestration of your presence in the mighty precious name of Jesus we pray that God Almighty it is you that ministers it is you that speaks over oh God Father, the land each and every person in this land is under your hand oh God in the name of Jesus mighty God we say that Lord this pandemic mighty God will not take our people will not take our nation we stand against oh God Father, any plots by the enemy that father healing is our portion healing is our portion in the name of Jesus Christ and father I pray that whoever is not well in this hour mighty God whoever is not well in this morning mighty God we pray for recovery oh God we pray for recovery over their lives for you said you have come to give us life and life in abundance oh God we pray for life in abundance oh father in the name of Jesus we decree and declare that father our land is healed our land is healed in the name of Jesus Christ mighty God we say that father those that we oh God father might have thought are gonna die we speak life upon them we declare like David of old and say we shall not die but we shall declare the good works of the Lord in the land of the living our perishing is not now our death is not now but there is life and life in abundance in the mighty precious name of Jesus I pray that this morning, oh God, corporately together from different denominations, from different places, we decree and declare the healing of our land. We decree and declare the healing of our land. In the name of Jesus, mighty God, we pray that, Father, it is you that gives us hope. For your word tells us that hope in the Lord does not disappoint. And even in this morning, we know that the hope in the Lord will not disappoint us. In the name of of Jesus we pray that father health workers oh God people that are in the front line they receive wisdom on what to do concerning this pandemic every person that is working in any lab concerning this pandemic they receive wisdom we speak life we decree life we decree health oh God in the name of Jesus Christ we say that father it takes place even in our lives we will witness the massive and undeniable power of God over our lives in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus our hope and our trust our belief and our dependence is on you we know that oh God it is you that can cause all things to take place in our lives and in our spirits in the mighty precious name of the Lord we lift you up oh great and mighty Jehovah we lift you up oh great and mighty God we lift you up oh precious and loving father in the name of Jesus Jesus Christ, we decree and declare that, Father, by your stripes we are healed. And Lord, we are delivered by your hand and by your grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. And Father, this morning we present the service unto your hands and we pray that, Lord, every word that I speak from my mouth, mighty God, may it come, O oh God, Father, with power and accuracy to transform and change somebody's life, O oh God. I pray that, Lord, I am only but a vessel that is used by you. May your spirit go ahead of me to convict, to touch, and to change the heart of somebody. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, precious Father, you deserve glory, you deserve honor, you deserve praise and you deserve adoration for your goodness and for your kindness that reigns even over our lives. We pray that even in this hour, Lord God Almighty, we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we give you praise for your goodness and for your kindness. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, we joined hands together and we joined our voices together and I believe that God had our prayers. He heard us when we called upon his name. And I believe that in this season we will receive greater testimonies of what God has done 
in the lives of the people in anybody's life we will see them testify the goodness of the lord in the land of the living we want to appreciate as well the wonderful worship that we received this wonderful morning from musa worship thank you so much for the wonderful music guys a church that you know is growing and is doing great and marvelous things of our friend uh pastor coquetso thank you so much for affording us the opportunity to have that wonderful worship one of my favorite songs if not my favorite in all of musa worships works as well thank you so much we also want to appreciate our media team as well for the hard work they continue to put in week in and week out uh, you'll see that our service changed a bit and we've got new things that have happened so we want to really appreciate them for the tireless work that they put in terms of voiceovers in terms of editing ideas brainstorming everything we appreciate them and we pray that god richly bless him another appreciation as well within the church as well we've got a membership care drive team that's going on making calls and calling every single member of the church checking up on them we've received great testimonies we've also received you know prayer requests as well so thank you so much to each and every member of the membership care drive team for the good work that you are doing and may god richly bless you we know that this is part of what we do we care for the total needs of the whole man and what we're doing is actually part of the mission and the vision that god has laid in our hearts as a church and as a congregation as well and we say that god richly bless you we want to encourage you as well to join our health club you'll see details coming up tuesdays and and thursdays we are in the health club the calvary christian church uh pretoria east health club this week they made us work so hard you can uh, you whatsapp our number as well gonna what send a whatsapp to our whatsapp a comms line they'll send you details on how to join it's a virtual training session for 30 minutes 5 30 to 6 o'clock every tuesday and thursday and you can definitely enjoy that with us as well we encourage you again as well if you've got a testimony to share with us on how this broadcast has impacted your life on how you have been encouraged in this time please get onto our whatsapp as well and send us a text send us what your reviews are send us what your you know suggestions are as well we really appreciate that for you to be able to make this work that we're doing much better as well and we believe that with your with your input as well we can be better than where we are right now and if you also need counseling or prayer or you've just given your life to christ please contact us on our whatsapp line we'll definitely make sure that we assign somebody to pray with you and to stand in the gap with you this wonderful morning we remind you again that we are a church you can call home cover christian church pretoria east we are led and directed by the holy spirit and in the form of our leaders and our founders visionary founders apostle dr a.m masakona and uh, D lady reverend dr florence masakona we appreciate them for allowing god to use them to bring us to this particular point our vision as a church we call it the big e and our vision is to exalt christ to evangelize the lost to encourage the hurting to enrich the community and equip the saints our mission as a church is transforming the total man by restoring hope to the hopeless training leaders and equipping the saints to the building of the church where christ is lord and more than anything we are christocentric we are centered on christ and we stand upon the revelation of christ which is where christ or jesus says he will build his church and no gates of hell shall prevail against us and we welcome you again as well this wonderful morning without any further ado I want to go directly into the word of God this morning. The vessel series has been doing so much in our lives, transforming us and, you know, changing us and taking us to different spaces and different places as well. The many reviews that I've got from people has just been life transforming and life changing as well. And remember, you can also join us again for our meet and greet in our connect room exactly at 12 p.m. this afternoon when the service is over. You can join us. The details will appear on the comments and you can just give us feedback on how the service wa was and just meet some of us and let's also get to meet you and see who's watching us in this wonderful morning but the vessel series has been really personal and dealing with 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 transformation personal transformation and aligning us and we are still at that series this wonderful morning and i believe that today's word is 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 gonna do stuff man it's gonna change our lives it's gonna transform us this morning as i was praying 
I had a word that I felt God wanted us to speak on. But as I was praying this morning, God really changed the direction. He said, this is the word I want you to share. This is the word I want my people to hear. And I believe that God will give me the grace this morning to do the justice that this word deserves in delivering it. Because you can feel it in your heart when God releases a word that this word is packed and there's a lot to give. But we pray that this morning, that this word, when it comes out, will really transform your life life. I want us to go to uh, quite a, a number of scriptures, three passages of scripture to be exact. And that's from the book of Mark chapter number 10 and verse number 17 to verse number 22. Mark chapter 10 verse number 17 to verse number 22. And we'll partner that with Luke chapter number 18 verse number 24 to verse number 30. Luke chapter 18 verse number 24 to verse number 30. And the last passage of scripture we read is Matthew chapter number 16 verse number 24. Matthew chapter number 16 verse number 24. Let's start from the book of Mark. Mark chapter 10 verse 17 to 22. The Bible reads as follows. Now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good, is good but one. That is God. You know the commandments do not do not commit adultery do not murder do not steal do not bear false witness do not defraud honor your father and your mother and he answered and said to him teacher all these things i have kept from my youth then jesus looking at him loved him and said to him one thing you lack go your way Sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Come and come, take up the cross and follow me. And come, take up the cross and follow me. The next passage of scripture is in the book of Luke chapter number 18 verse number 24. And we're going to read all the way to verse number 13. The Bible reads as follows. And when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful, he said, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And those who heard it said, Who then can be saved? But he said, The things which are impossible with man are possible with God. Then Peter said, See, we have left all and followed you. So he said to them, Assuredly I say to you, There is no one who has left house or parents or, or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life the last passage of scripture is Matthew chapter number 16 verse number 24 the Bible reads as follows then he said to his disciples if anyone desires to come after me let him deny himself take and take up his cross and follow me. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. We bless the Lord for the reading of his word this wonderful morning. Well, I want to go back and really continue from last week's word um, and really build up on that because as, as God reminded me of, uh, as God really changed my direction this wonderful morning on this word uh, and it brought me right here. I remembered last week's word which was versus price and you want to go back to that because it was a powerful and a great word. But today I want to share on the word dead vessels dead vessels oh everybody seems to be shaking a bit right there because we're speaking on death dead 
vessels. It's a word that really came strongly to my spirit. And this morning, I really believe that God is going to transform our lives through this word. The passage of scripture where we have read, and we've done a conglomeration, which I will decipher shortly in terms of how we put all the scriptures together. The passage of scripture where we've read, Jesus is meeting up with his uh, disciples or sitting with his disciples and if you read just a, a couple of verses before uh, you realize I think from verse number 14 to verse number 16 you realize of the same chapter of Mark chapter number 10 you realize that uh, the Bible says to us that children came uh, that were brought to him so that he might bless them they came to him so that he might bless the children and and it happens that when they came when the children came to him the bible says the disciples refused them and said no 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 you can't come here you know the protocol the gates the order <laughs> so the disciples were actually putting some sort of protocol and saying no 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 we can't have our master you know associating with children and petty things and small things we we, we need to put him into a certain level and a certain you know altitude or a certain dimension and when they refuse that Bible says Jesus is the one that says to them no 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 suffer the little children to come unto me let them come to me for such is the kingdom of God so Jesus Jesus, when the doors were closed for certain vessels, he opens them up. He says, no, 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 let them come unto me. I want them to come unto me. There are spaces and there are times where people can refuse us access, but the one who owns the land, the one who owns the door and the house opens up for us. Have you ever found yourself in a space and in a place where the servant refuses you access, but the master opens up for you? And this is the kind of God we serve. Sometimes we might feel like we can not make it in this place. Sometimes we might feel like we cannot enter this territory. Sometimes we might feel like we cannot be allowed to come into this door. But the one that refused us is also a servant. But when it comes to the master, the master has room for everyone. The master has got an open door for everyone. The master lets everyone, everyone come as they are. He will work on them and change them on the way. And we realize that this time did Jesus says no 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 let the children come unto me and he let them sit with them and he blessed them he released what they needed he released what they came for verse number 17 is where we have read and it continues on to bring us to a place the bible says now as he was going down the road one came running and knelt before him and asked him good teacher what shall i do that i may inherit eternal life and this is where i want to bring us to the one that was running and coming to him that we Matthew, Mark, and, and Luke are the ones that report this particular story. But the one that was coming and running to him, if you read the three synoptic gospels that I've spoken about, you'll realize in those chapters that he was a young rich ruler. He was not just anybody. He was young, he was rich, and he was a ruler. So his age was important for us to take note of. He was young, it was denoting that he was maybe in his early to mid 20s, late 20s, early to mid 30s, somewhere around those, those ages between 20 and, and 35 was where he was but he was rich also in other words he had made it he had come to a certain level of affluence he had come to a certain level you know in the society let's deal with that for a few minutes when you study history you will understand that he was not just a ruler he was actually a ruler amongst or in the synagogue he was there in the level of the synagogue so he was there in the level of the Pharisees and all those guys. He was he, he, those were those were his people that he would hang around with. So you wouldn't find him hanging around like with Peter, with John, with Bartholomew, with Nathaniel, with the you know with the small guys. He he had made it. He was he was walking with the Elijah. But the Bible says he ran towards Jesus when he was going down the road, and he says, "I want us to denote and take note of the fact that he said to Jesus." 
What shall I do to inherit the kingdom of God? What shall I do to inherit the kingdom of God? It was believed even in this time or even in these days that in order for you to be to 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 to, to show forth your kingdomness, you had to be rich. You had to to be you know affluent. You had to be at that particular level. Does that sound familiar? It almost sounds like the gauge we always put in our day and in our time that if you if you are not affluent, if you are not there, you have not reached the life. You have not reached the level. But I want to bring to you that some of the no- most anointed vessels, some of the most closest vessels to God are not necessarily the richest people, are not necessarily the most affluent, but God has called them nonetheless. And it was a belief even in this time that that was such a grading and such a level that people would understand that you have made it and you have come to the place where you can be respected. So the young rich ruler is where I want to start with. Now, for point number one, he says... What shall I do to inherit the kingdom of God? The interesting thing is that he's asking, what shall I do? Notice that his dependence and his view was that whatever will get me to the kingdom of God is something that I must do. Is something that must be done by me. And he says, what shall I do? In other words, he understood, if I don't do, there will be nothing that comes up. If I don't do, there will be nothing that happens up and this is the particular order that i'm bringing you to he says what shall i do to inherit the kingdom of god he already believed that it cannot be done outside of doing now his richness or his wealth had already educated him and taught him the fact that whatever i need to access i need to do and i want to bring it home he had already depended on his own strength he had already depended on his own power. He had already depended on his own ability. And God said, there are vessels that are sitting in a place where they depend so much on what they can do to achieve one, two, three. What they can do to get to this particular level. One of the reasons why he might have been brought into the con- con- rather the, 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 the conglomeration or the association of rulers is because he had a deep pocket. Some Sometimes we confuse the depth of the pocket with the depth of relationship. Some of the deepest pockets are the furthest away from God. Some of the deepest pockets are not as close to God as we think. He says, what can I do to inherit? Notice the words he used. He uses the word inherit. The word inherit simply means or simply denotes to the fact that he's using financial orientated terms. He begins to speak up in a version that aligns to the life he's used to. He feels like uh, at some point I can buy my way into the kingdom. At some point I can purchase my way into the kingdom. At some point I can make some money to be able to enter the kingdom. Sometimes we have thought uh, that it is enough money that will get us enough seats in the kingdom. But God is not about how deep your pocket is. Uh, God is not about how much you can afford. Uh, sometimes uh, we have worked so hard on becoming richer so that we show that God is with us. But this is a season where God has affected both the rich and rather where, where the disease and the thing that we are, we are going through has affected both the rich and the poor. It doesn't matter whether you are up or you are down, you are affected. It's like God was trying to also show his supremacy, his greatness in the sense that he is not after these things. One of the things that has happened in this time is that we have we have come to to learn to wake up as to what is meaningful what are the things that are meaningful what are the things that we that we can do that will change and transform our lives up that will change and transform our ways up and our journey and it is important for us to understand up that God is not after what we can do God is not after what we can do when he asks the question he says what shall I do what can I do it is interesting that he was saying that I have the power to do I have the power to change my level 
it's like also the other thing he was showing us is that I have accu accumulated everything I have. I have accumulated all the riches I have. I have accumulated all the money I can accumulate. But the problem is I have realized despite the fact that I have everything, I am missing the one thing. It's like he was communicating there is a void in my life. There is a void that exists in my life. Am I talking to somebody this morning that sits in a place where you have you have a great career oh yes you are making it six digits strong you every month you are making it up shopping is nothing to you buying a new car is nothing to you buying a house is nothing to you but whatever you have does not mean you have everything sometimes we can think we have everything but we don't have him we don't have him in our lives we don't have who he is in our lives and this is the question that the young man was telling us in hindsight that I'm rich, that I'm a ruler, that I've made it. But the problem is there is something that is missing. I'm not sure if I can make it to the kingdom of heaven. It's like I understood that I am not sure if I can make it into the kingdom of heaven. And the Bible says, Jesus speaks to him. He says, why do you call me good? He says, there's only one who is good. That is God himself. But as he continues, he says, he speaks a good thing. He says, you know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not de defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He speaks of all this, of all these laws. And the young man boldly responds. He says, yes, all that I have done from my youth, all that I have done since I was young, he ticked the boxes. And I'm here to talk about the vessels, the vessels that tick boxes. There are vessels that just want to tick the box. Just want to make sure everybody when they look at the checklist you have made it do you come to church tick up do you serve in the church tick up do you have money tick up do you have a great car tick up do you have a great house tick up do you have a lovely family tick up but when all the boxes are ticked it does not mean you are in that particular space there are boxes that might not exist in the checklist there are boxes that might not exist in the checklist of us as a people of me as a pastor but this is a checklist that heaven is looking at. And Jesus, after he has spoken to this young man, and the young man responds. The Bible says, he says, from my youth I have kept all of this. And he says, to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. This is the trick where, we are, where I'm coming to and the gist of my matter. The young man had done everything but died. But the young man had died everything except had done everything except dying. And this is the, the issue of the matter. The question is as a vessel, what am I ready to die for? How far am I ready to go to serve him? The young man had, ma had mustered up the laws from his youth. The young man had mustered up the work from his youth. The young man had served in the church for 20 years. The young man had played keyboards. The young man had traveled with the pastor. The young man had served tea. He had done all of these things. But the th issue was God wanted a death. God wanted a death. How does this symbol, how does this symbolize a death? The young man had all these possessions. The Bible says Jesus attacked his possessions. He went directly to his possessions. He says, go sell everything that you got. Give to the poor. Now listen, I understand selling the everything that I've got and I keep the money. But Jesus went a step further. He said, sell everything that you got and give to the poor. He was saying, no, 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 no. We don't want you to come with everything that you got. We want you more than what you got. So many vessels are giving what they have except them themselves. So many vessels are giving the money they've got except themselves. And God asked me a pertinent question internally. He says, are you dead? Are you dead? Have you died yet? And I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, the problem is I've got many vessels in the church but they have not died. They are still alive. They are still there. For Paul says in Galatians 2 verse 20, he says, for it is no longer I that lives but Christ that lives in me. 
Paul had died. Paul had died to himself. And there are people that today we want to serve, but we have not died to self. We have not died to self. The young man was challenged by Jesus. He said, go sell everything that you've got and give to the poor. Whatever you have, whatever you acquire from the sale, give to the poor. Whatever you acquire from the sale, let it go. Now, this is, the, this is where God said to me, he said, some of us, and this is going to be deeper, some of us, we, are, we have got possessions, but the possessions have actually, have, have actually possessed us. The possessions are the ones that have got us. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, some of us, we have protected the status at the expense of our own death. By death, I don't mean go kill yourself. By death, I don't mean go hang yourself. But by death, I mean, what do you really care about? Some of us have kept the status of being richer at the expense of having a relationship with him. We have kept the wealth at the expense of having a relationship with him. And today God says, I am looking for dead vessels. I am looking for vessels that are dead to themselves. They care not what they have, but they care whom they have. They care not how much they have. They care whom they have. They care not what their status in the, in the in the eyes of the people is but they care what their status in heaven is and this time and this season I don't know who I'm talking to you have kept the visage you have kept the level going you have kept everybody satisfied have you kept the pastor happy yes the pastor is very happy with you have you kept the members of the church happy yes the members of the church are very happy with you have you kept your home cell happy yes you have kept your home cell happy when we do projects you give when we do this you give when we do that you are there but the question is in the book of life in the heavens are you registered as one of those vessels that can be trusted as one of those vessels that we can depend on as one of those verses that have died to themselves and Jesus says when you have sold to the poor you have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me he says you cannot be part of me unless you take up the cross so many of us have hidden away from the cross so many of us we run away from the cross which links up again to our word from last week that there is a price that must be paid the young men wanted to be associated with Jesus. The young man wanted to be at the same, you know, level where he inherits eternal life. But the question is, young man, are you ready to lose it? Are you ready to lose it? So many of us, we want to stand in the pews. We want to stand on the podiums. We want to stand on the levels, but we are not ready to lose it. And God asked me a personal question. He said, are you ready to lose it? I said, Lord, what is it? He said, you got to die to self. You got to die to self. As long as you want to keep yourself up, you will lose the treasure in heaven. You will lose what is there in heaven. And when we read Luke chapter number 10, chapter number 18 verse number 24 it is a continuation of this story we have joined Mark's perspective of this story and then we have brought Luke's perspective onto this story the reason why I brought Luke's perspective is that the Bible says Jesus saw that he became sorrowful Jesus could see that the young man became sorrowful what are you willing to lose to be the right kind of vessel what are you willing to lose to be standing in the right place with him you know you are appreciated by people. You know when you walk into the room we are excited. A young rich ruler. He has made it. A young rich ruler. He has made it in this life. What more could he desire? What more could he need? But the bigger question is not what more could he need? But the bigger question is who? He, who, who much more does he need? And I want to bring you to a place of understanding that the young man was sorrowful. It's like Jesus was saying, I am looking for you to lose those things that will make you sorrowful. I am looking for you to lose those things that will make you sorrowful. If you are not willing to be sorrowful for my sake, if you are not willing to take up a cross for my sake, then your vesselhood is questionable. Then your vesselhood is questionable. I began to look at the state of my life. I began to look at where I am. I realized there are certain crosses that I would never have carried had I not decided to follow him. Had I not decided to be part of him. 
I understood that there are places I must be dead to. I understood there are things I must be dead to. I understood that there are places where I must pass like they do not exist. There are things I must pass like they do not exist. Can we go down a bit further and deal with some deep things? At some point in my life, I realized that before me was a beautiful and a wonderful and a great and you know attractive woman. She was there. She was there. And I was so excited. Oh my God. You know when somebody feels like they want to move close to you, you feel like, oh wow, oh, I didn't know that I could attract somebody like this. Everything was there. Everything was ready for the taking. Ah, but because, but because I am dead, I had to die into this issue. I had to say, no, 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 no. I have to refuse. There are things you want that you must refuse. There are things you desire that you must refuse. There are places you must walk by like they do not exist. There are spaces you must pass like they do not exist. There are places you must walk past like they do not exist. And the challenge today is so many of us, we stop. We don't walk past. We don't walk past. How dead are you? How many things have you died to? How many things have you died to? In order to become the dead vessel, it requires a vessel that stands in a place that says, I have died. It is no longer I that I'm looking out for. It is Christ that I'm looking out for. And the Bible says when he saw it, he says how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. What was he talking about? There are idols we gotta lose. There are things we hold highly. There are things we hold at a certain, you know, level and a certain pitch. We feel like if we, if, if we, if we lose these things, our lives are over. But it is like the loss of those things is actually the beginning of your life. The young man lost eternal life. All because he wanted to keep affluency. All because he wanted to keep, you know, the direction that is appreciated by the world. The Bible says what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Some of us, we have gained the whole world and I'm here to deal with somebody. There is a question. Have you really gained the whole world at the expense of losing him? Have you really gained the whole world at the expense of losing his love and his direction? There is a question that we ask this day. There is a question that we ask this morning is how far are you willing Willing to go to become his vessel how far are you willing to go to become part of what he's doing how far are you willing to go to be part of the work that he is doing the scripture says to us uh, then the bible says uh, and and when they heard this uh, who then can be saved uh, the reason why they asked that uh, is because they thought that those that are rich those that have made it up uh, you know financially are the ones that are truly saved uh, but jesus was going against that statement uh, and when they asked that he said the things which are impossible with man are possible with God. He was actually trying to say whatever you lose here whatever you lose for me when you think it is impossible to get them back it is possible for God to give them back to you and the Bible says then Peter said see we have left all and followed you. This line here just hit home. He says we have left all and followed you. What did they leave? They left their businesses they left their fishing Luke left a medical practice. Matthew left a tax collection. He was working at the tax revenue services. He was having an affluent job. There are ministers, some of your pastors, some of the people you look up to, they have left all and followed him. They have left all and followed him. How much are you willing to live? How much are you willing to pay? How much are you willing to pay to stand at a place where you become his vessel? Where you become his vessel? And Peter says, we have left all and followed you then he says assuredly i say to you you there is no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of god who shall not receive up many times more in the present time and in the age to come eternal life you must understand he was also saying for you to be able to transit for you to be able to move there are losses you must accept there are things you must accept that i gotta lose them i 
got to die to them. I got to accept there are relationships I've got to lose. Up. There are spaces I've got to let go of. Up. There are places I've got to let go of. Up. If we do not come to the place up, of understanding that when we are called, up, we are called up, to not only just be vessels, up, but the kind of vessels that are dead to ourselves, up, that are dead to ourselves. Up. And Jesus himself up, was not talking about something he was not going to do. He was not talking about something he was not going to follow through. He was talking about something that he was going to experience. Up. There are lasers that must die. Up. There are lasers that you must die to actually. Let me rephrase that. There are things you must die to. So many times we try to kill the things. Up. No, he does not want the things to die. He wants you to die to the things. Up. The things will not disappear. Will that temptation go away? Will that issue go away? Oh, maybe it might not go away. It might not disappear, but I gotta die to it. Up. I gotta die to it. Up. So many of us are waiting for a world without temptation. I'm waiting for a world without complications. Up. I'm waiting for a world without diseases. Up. I'm waiting for a world without fights and troubles up. for us to serve God. Up. That season I am here to disappoint you is not gonna come. There's not gonna be a season like that. You have to die to those things. Up. You have to die to those things. Up. Some of the things are delicious. Up. Some of the things are lovely. Some of the things look attractive, but you gotta die, baby. You gotta die to those things. Up. Unless you die to those things, up, he will never have a vessel that he can say, this vessel is dead. This vessel is dead. There is a death he's calling us to. A death that we run away from the things that seem, you know, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh attractive. We run away from the things that seem like they are calling us up. From the things that seem to affirm us in certain levels. From the things that seem to affirm us in certain spaces. From the things that seem to affirm us up in certain, you know, <clears throat> cliques up and, and droops up. But we got to die to those things up. We got to die to those things up. And he says, for you to be able to enter the kingdom of God, there is a death that must happen. Today we suffer because so many vessels are still alive. So many vessels are still living. And unless you come to the place where a death happens, a death to self, a death to me, Jesus hung on the cross. He died. He died died to himself and he understood in order to be a worthy and a fit vessel a vessel i gotta die i got to die i got to die it is the same jesus in john chapter 12 verse number 24 he says unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies it will remain alone and this is the trick there are so many times where god has required us to die but we have refused to die we have refused to die to self. When he called Abraham, he called him to die to the relationship with his own family. He said, you got to die. you got to leave your own household. You got, there is a death that you must pay. There is a death that you must pay. When he called Samson, he wanted him to die. His eyes were lost. He needed to die from what pleased him. Remember, Samson was attracted to women. He would call, when he sees a woman, he would say, make her my wife. I want her to be my wife. But his eyes were gushed out. you got to die. you got to die. And the question is, how far are you willing to go? How far? Are you willing to die? In the book of Matthew chapter number 16, verse number 24, he says that Jesus says to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, to follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let him deny himself. So many times we want to follow him but we don't want to deny ourselves. We don't want to deny ourselves. Denying yourself simply means there are things you might feel that must come your way right now. But you deny yourself those things for the sake of what he has called you for. For the sake of where he has sent you for. Sometimes we want to we wanna, we wanna sit in the seat or rather we want to sit on the stand. We want to sit on the level. We want to sit in the place that we do not want to pay the price for. We do not want to pay the price for. And he says the ultimate space, the ultimate place, the ultimate level is a place where I have got dead vessels. Vessels that are willing to die to themselves. Vessels 
that are willing to die to themselves. I count so many opportunities, countless opportunities, countless spaces, countless places, counted levels, countless people, countless opportunities that I would have exercised and ran after. But the problem is, I am his vessel. The problem is, my master does not allow me to be finding myself in that place. My master, the one who called me, does not allow me to be found there. And remember, you cannot allow death. Rather, you cannot allow that thing to be alive, to live in you. You cannot allow that thing to live through you. There are things that must die for us to be able to come to the place where we can say that I am living a life, that I am a full vessel for him. I am a vessel that has been called by him. I am a vessel that has been attended, that has been worked by him. The things that the young rich ruler was prepared to do were wonderful, they were lovely, they were great. But was he, be, was he prepared that things must be done on him for him to be his vessel? Was he prepared that things must be done on him? It is not oftentimes, it is not about what you can do. It is about what needs to be done on you. It is about the things that need to be done on you. And so many times we enjoy what we can do. We look for what we can do. But now God is not looking for what you can do. He's looking for what he can do in you. Some of the things we suffer, we suffer not because we are not educated. We suffer not because we are not, we are not there in that level of wellness or anything of that nature. But we suffer just because of the death we will suffer for the sake of this gospel for the sake of this cross as you can hear beyond the background there's a kettle of water that i'm boiling right now and i've brought back some vessels that i really want to talk about before we close this wonderful morning the vessels that are willing to die there is this vessel that is called the cup you know, I brought that wonderful cup again and I brought it back. There's this wonderful vessel that is, got, that is called the cup. And I've got another vessel right here, which is made out of plastic. This vessel is not, you know, as, as good as this one. It is not as, you know, as powerful as, or as beautiful as this one. But I want to show you something that is quite prevalent. And when I saw this picture, God showed it to me and I said, wow, God, I did not see it like this. Both vessels have got the ability to carry. Both vessels have got the ability to carry and i want you to, to look at them as the water is just about to finish boiling and i want i want us to see that that there is something important and the lesson that we need to draw out of these vessels this one is the beautiful one and we're going to start with this one this one is the one that looks greater this one almost looks like the young rich ruler it has made it in life it is there in life it is you know it is affluent it is at the top it is at the level but there is still a price that must be paid there is still a price that must be paid and this is the vessel this vessel represents you and me this vessel represents some of us in that particular space in that high level where we are steady in that high level of altitude where we are found in that high proximity that we are found in that high respectable position that we are found when the water has boiled when the water has boiled and everything is ready and everything is fine you see you can be excited when you have nothing to carry you can be great when you have nothing to carry you can be great when you have nothing to carry you can be awesome when there is no price to be paid but there comes a time when a price must be paid and when the price is paid up what is hot comes into you what is hot comes into you now understand this up you are carrying what does not belong to you and this is the cost I want to come down to the, 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 the cup will not drink this water 
The cup will not drink this tea. The cup will not have this tea to be drunk. But as I touch the cup, the cup is hot. The cup becomes what it carries. In other words, there are places where I am hot. And yes, my heat is not for my own sake. But somebody else is going to enjoy this thing. Somebody else is going to enjoy this thing. The same cup carries what makes it uncomfortable. The same cup carries what makes it not so comfortable in this life. And God has called some of us to carry hot things. To carry things that are not going to make us too happy. To carry things that are not going to make us too comfortable. And this is the place where God is calling us. That some vessels have to pay by carrying things that are hot. But the same plastic vessels come also as well. The plastic vessels are the ones that are called to also carry hot things. And when they carry hot things, this plastic vessel was made up in a factory somewhere. It was made beautiful. It was made lovely. It was made wonderful. It was made great. But I want you to understand that when the heat goes into it, it begins to shrink. It begins to lose its shape. It begins to lose its shape. It's so hot. I don't have to hold it with my own hand. It begins to lose its shape. It begins to take the shape of what is inside of it. And this is what I want to bring you to. Understand this. Sometimes you got to lose your shape. I can feel it. It's no longer as strong as it used to be. It begins to melt a bit. It begins to melt a bit. Because it's carrying stuff that is hot. But the hot stuff that it carries. As long as it, as it carries. That is the most important thing. And understand this. There are some who are made of plastic. They are not the most fashionable vessels. They are, most, they are not the most expensive vessels. vessels. But when they go before the master. As much as they've been made up from plastic, they continue to carry. They continue to carry. I know it is hot. I know it is hard. But don't let it spill. But don't let it go out. This is the plastic vessel. As long as it knows that whatever it is carrying is not spilling out. And this is the place where God is calling us to. That no matter how painful the call becomes. No matter how difficult the call becomes. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't let it go. Don't throw without. I know the Christianity level is difficult right now. I know being a Christian is not easy right now. But don't throw it out. Don't throw it out. Continue to carry on. Continue to carry on. Don't throw it out. No matter how much you lose your shape. Don't throw it out. No matter how much it seems hard. Continue carrying. No matter how uncomfortable it looks. Continue carrying. For he's calling a vessel that is dead to itself. And this morning, I want to ask a question again. How far are you willing to go? How far are you willing to go to carry the cause of that which he has called you for? How far are you willing to go to carry that which he has called you concerning? How far are you willing to go? This morning, I want to pray that God give me the grace to go to even a place of death for the sake of being your vessel. Even a place of death, dying to self. There are things I've decided to lose. There are things I've decided not to keep because I have decided to die to myself. I have decided to die to myself. How far are you willing to go? Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, we are called to you. We are called by you to do your work. Lord God Almighty, I commit myself. I commit each and every person that is under the sound of my voice. That God Almighty, may you help us. May you aid us, O oh God. That we understand that we have been called to go the distance. We have been called not to just be vessels, but vessels that are dead to themselves. It's a hard word. It's a hard word. But Father, it is a possible word. It is something we can do. And Father, I'm willing to stand in a place where I lose what I need to lose just to be a worthy vessel before you. Just to be an acknowledged vessel before you. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that God Almighty walk with us and lead us that Father, we are worthy vessels. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that there's somebody who's holding on, 
holding on to that thing because they feel they can't lose it. But Father, may we die to self. May we die to self for the sake of your kingdom, for the sake of your work, for the sake of being a vessel that belongs to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And this morning, if you are there and you need to receive Christ as a Lord and personal Savior, and you know that I've never received him, that my life is not right with him, that my life is not in right standing with God, I want you to go with me in prayer this morning and give your life to Christ. And say, here I am, I'm giving my life to you, Lord. I'm giving my life to your hands. I'm giving my life to who you are. That you order my ways and you lead my steps. Let us pray. I want you to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you and I offer my life as a living sacrifice. That you come and you inhabit my life. I give my life to you today. And I all throw away the old things. And I stand today to commit my life to you. I receive you, Lord Jesus Christ, as my Lord and personal Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. I want you to make sure that you receive him. But as you receive him, understand this that you must pursue a place where you are dead to yourself, where you forget what you want to accumulate, where you forget the things, the things that you felt were the most important in life. But pursue a permanent and a consistent and a life-giving relationship with the Lord. These are not the seasons and the times where we are collecting items and collecting material things, but these are the seasons and the times where we are sure, or ensure rather, that we are in the book of life. Where we are written in the book of life. We are in relationship with him. And we are sitting in relationship with him. Even in this hour. And may God help us. May God help me. That there are things I must die to. That there is a place I must die to. That there is a space and a, and a time and a season that I must die to. So that I might say that the Lord. I am his vessel. That I might say to him. That I belong to him. If you have received the Lord Jesus Christ this wonderful morning and you want to get somebody to pray with you, even if you just need prayer from somebody and it's not necessarily you receiving the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll see our WhatsApp line pop up right there. Text us and we'll make sure that somebody reaches out to you and prays with you and stands in the gap with you. We want to also encourage you this morning to partner with us to give an offering, to give any figure, any amount any gift that you'd like to give to make sure that we continue in this work that we're doing. I want you to commit yourself, convicted in your heart by the Holy Spirit, to support us even in this. We encourage you to give. You'll see our banking details displayed right there. We encourage you to give and support us even in this work. We know there's a place and there's a goal where we desire. There's a place and a direction where we desire to be. And may God richly bless you even as you give that which you have purposed in your heart. And we believe that this season and this time will also pass and we will stand from a place of, of victory in the days to come. We remind you yet again to join us again for our Rewind Wednesday where we go back to the series of the Christian life. This time we're doing the series of the Christian life. Great and powerful series that God laid in our hearts a couple of years ago and we believe you'll be blessed right there. Every Wednesday on Instagram and on Facebook, on our Facebook page and on our either that the Rewind Wednesday going through Share it with somebody. Share the gospel with somebody. And make sure that you continue to share the good news. God bless you. We love you so much. And thank you for joining us this wonderful morning. We'll meet again, same time, same place, next week. God bless you. And that brings us to the end of our service today. We do believe you've had a blessed time with us today. If you felt touched and led in your heart to be a part of our family as a member, feel free to visit us on our website on www.calvarychristianchurchpe.org to register as a member or drop us a text on our WhatsApp comms line on 073-381-7800 for more information on who we are. If you've also given your life to Christ in need of prayer or counseling, 
we would like to connect you to someone who will pray with you. Please feel free to contact us on any of our platforms. Remember to follow us on our different social media platforms and partner with us as we spread the gospel. Do join us again soon and remember that God loves you.